What's going on everybody? I'm Outlet and today I'm gonna teach you how to bus. Bussing, routing techniques, filtering, how to create an automation clip, all various things that we'll be covering today. So let's hop over to FL Studio, shall we? So here we have a house music project file that will be available in the description, of course. Just fill out the Google form and it'll be sent over to your email shortly. Let's take a look, shall we? You get the point. So let's figure out first how to create a send. So I've got this vocal I recorded and to create a send, all you need to do is go down here, go down here where these, this up carrot, link it to whatever channel you want it to become a send. And then make sure that this little volume knob here is turned down. Then what you want to do is go to the original track, the outlet vocals in this case, go to any of your open slots, and then do fruity send. If you've done this properly, you'll be able to click the send to button and do your vocal FX send. To save your ears, I've turned the channel way down because what it's doing here now is it's duplicating the dry signal. So whatever you had, it's now multiplied. It's not like sound works where it's two plus two. It's more like two times two, if you know what I mean. Break it, break it, break it, break it, twist and mix, break it up. But what that allows you to do is it allows you to separate effects and the dry signal. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called parallel processing. So now that we have our vocal FX send, I'm going to unmute the effects and we're gonna see what we got. I got an EQ here, just flat line, delay, currently turned down, and a reverb. So with the reverb, we want to take off the dry signal. I already got plenty of that on the other chain. I turn up the size considerably almost all the way and then I turn the mod all the way up. This ensures that it's a little bit smoother. Like I said before, it's processing in parallel. So that means I can just solo the reverb, no dry signal needed. This allows me to fine tune the EQ and other effects surrounding the wet signal without affecting the dry signal or relying on low cut and high cut inside of the reverb itself. I can go in here and EQ it, do whatever I need to do. I'm gonna increase the decay a little bit. Maybe the delay, 70 milliseconds. The high cut, gonna get to like 6K. Low cut here, I'm just gonna make sure that those low frequencies are shelved off as well. And then for stereo separation, you could pull it a little bit back. It'll bring it more kind of in a stereo, the stereo image as opposed to right down the center because ideally your vocals are gonna be right down the center. Nice and stereo. So the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go to my vocal channel here. And what I did is I took a regular fruity parametric EQ and I'm automating the seven band and the one band here. I right click that, usually do steep four here. Break it, break it, break it. I'm sure you see where we're going here. Right click this frequency here, the first, the number one knob. This knob controls that, by the way, if you were wondering. I'm gonna create automation clips for both of them. So right click, create automation clip. The cool part about FL Studio is that you can do that with any value in the program. It shows up in the playlist, good stuff. So now I got my automation clips here and I'm gonna do my thing. If you want the reverb or any other effects to peak up while the filter on the vocals are down, make sure that the filter is actually after the send. Just the, a fun fact there. Yeah. Good example here is on this yeah, yeah. yeah. I have no filter on yeah. it, right? And then I take the filter down here, the low pass filter. That's cutting out the whole frequency spectrum when I do it like that. The reverb is still coming through. Now, if I were to put it before the send, it doesn't come through at all. I'm also gonna automate the volume of the actual reverb and delay on the send so that I have full control of it. Now I'm gonna throw a delay on the vocal send. 
let's do a funky delay. So we're gonna do six time in the top left, you can see here. This is the informational panel. So if you if you put your mouse over anything, it'll tell you the time, the percentage, all sorts of useful information. So I have the time on six. I'm gonna do ping pong delay where it ping pongs between each headphone. And then I'm gonna take down the, the signal here probably about 60 to 70%, just in the background. If you're ever working in FL Studio and a knob won't stay in position, it's connected to an automation clip already, most likely. If not, just right click and then unclick in it this song with this position yeah. Yeah. and it should stay. Now I'm gonna create an automation clip with the delay signal as well, the mix level of the signal. I only want it to happen in certain parts of the track. So I'm gonna add it here, a little there. We're gonna make it come in later, inside the beat drop, inside the beat drop, inside the beat drop, inside the beat drop. Cut it out when the vocal comes in again. We'll do the same thing here, 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 same thing here. Now let's see what that did. Yeah. Now let's do our drum bus. With a bus, it allows you to not only mix all of your sounds independently, but send them somewhere else for effects processing to affect all of the sounds. So we're gonna open our mixer here, and we're gonna click and drag across all the channels we want to connect to our bus. This will only work if they're all in a line, otherwise you gotta do them all independently. Go to your drum bus in this up carrot down here, right click that and route to this track only. That will not only connect all of these to that channel, but it will disconnect them from the master channel. Next, you wanna double check that your drum bus isn't connected to any other channel here and is only connected to the master channel. Now let's hear what it sounds like. Now what happened is if I mute this drum bus, it mutes everything connected to it. Next, I'm gonna be adding an EQ and using it again to filter all the sounds that are linked to the channel now. Right click here, make the type low pass, right click again, make the order steep four. This slope is kind of weird, so this bottom knob here, right click that and reset it, then right click this and create automation clip. Now we can independently filter the clap and hi-hats, anything else. Lastly, I'm gonna do a dramatic low pass bus to handle all the sounds we haven't gotten to yet. So that includes tracks 13 through 18 and the kick and the bass. Now what do the kick and the bass and the vocal with the vocal send have in common here? If you look at the bottom, they've got pre-designated routing positions. So I'm routing the vocal to the vocal send and I'm routing the kick to the bass because I'm side chaining it with a fruity limiter, right? So because of that, you have to individually assign them to the bus. You can't double click and drag because it will reset your routing, very important. It basically overwrites what you have there already. So you can double click and drag to here, no pre-routing designation here, connect it route to this track only to the dramatic low pass bus and do it individually with the vocal. So take that there, put that there, and then the vocal send, put that there, take that off there. Great. Keeping the routing we had. So we're gonna take the kick off the master, put it on the low pass bus, and we're gonna take, do the same thing with the bass. Great. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the low pass filter here. So we're gonna select slot one, fruity parametric EQ two, you know the drill, right click seven, type low pass, Right click again, reset, right click again, order steep four. You could do it any, any slope you want. The higher in the order, the more dramatic the shift goes, so the more the phase changes. For this demonstration, I'll do steep eight. Now right click this knob and create an automation clip. So what did we link here? We linked the kick, bass, these percussion loops, noise, the vocals, and the vocal send. So now I'm gonna do my thing real quick. finally finished 
doing all that routing, all that automation and filtering. Let's see what we got. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned at least one useful piece of information from this video. I have a couple announcements for you today. I have two new YouTube series dropping. The first of which is fixing your FLPs, where you send in your FLPs to me and I fix them live on video, offering some constructive criticism on everything from organization of your project files to your mixing, mastering, etc. And I personally go in there and I fix whatever needs to be fixed to make it a placement ready beat. It is a collaboration with me, so you don't want to miss out. The second of which is beat reviews, where you send in your beats to me and I tell you what I think, what could be improved, what you're doing great at, uh, how, how's the loop, how's the mix, how's the arrangement, the whole nine yards. You don't want to miss this. So if you got an FLP, you got beat block, just couldn't find the courage to finish it. It started personally attacking you, roasting your hair and your nails. You could just send it to me to put it in its place. Or if you got a beat you think is great, you want me to destroy it absolutely with constructive criticism and kindness, of course. You could submit either in the Google form links down below absolutely free.